The LZX Passage is a three-channel video mixer. Each channel can mix together audio rate, low-frequency oscillation, and video rate signals into one output. There are inverting attenuator controls and a bias control, which can be applied before or after the attenuated signal. Each channel of the Passage has two inputs. There's one labeled in and one labeled through. The through input is added with no change whatsoever. The in is attenuated using the in knob, and an offset is applied with the bias knob. The sum comes out of the black channel. One of the most essential uses of Passage is adding fine controls to inputs that don't otherwise have them. I'm going to take an H plus V ramp from the visual cortex and put it into the through input on one channel of the Passage. Take the output into layer one of the color chords, and here we see our basic ramp. With nothing plugged into the in, you'll see minimal results from turning this knob. The bias, on the other hand, as you can see, will add or subtract from the entire image. So I'll keep that at zero right now. And from here, we'll go into the source on a staircase. The source input on the staircase, like a lot of inputs on LZX, have no input controls. Passage is a great way to add more control to those types of inputs in the system. So I'm going to take the divide by one out, go into layer one, and now you see staircase doing its staircase thing. So I'll bring this down a little bit lower. And while staircase does have voltage controls for the phase and multiplication, there isn't any control for modulating the source input itself. This is where passage comes in. As we start to bias, you'll see it affecting the staircase much differently. So this gives us another layer of animation and another layer of control. If we want to modulate this, all we have to do is go from the LFO on a pendulum to the in on the passage. Now as we adjust the attenuator on the in one control, you start to get that movement from the LFO. Summing video rate signals with LFOs is probably one of the more common uses for passage. We can take this even further by getting a second channel of passage involved. So now we'll disconnect this, take the output from channel one, put it into the through input on channel two, take the output from channel two, and then what we want to do is plug a different source into the input here. I'll take an output from the prismatic ray. Prismatic ray is currently vertically synced. So as you can see, now we can start to add these vertical bars into our signal as well. And I can change the amount. I could bring this down to audio rate. I could bring it all the way down to LFO speeds. So now we can add two different LFOs to the signal. Get some scrolling audio rate modulation. By taking a simple diamond ramp and summing it with the LFO, summing it with a prismatic ray, we could take this very simple source into the staircase and get really dynamic results. This also works great with arch, bridge, and any expedition modules that work well with gradient inputs. Before moving on to the other patches, it's important to explain the difference between the pre and post switch. This switch determines whether the bias is applied before or after the attenuverter on the input. So here I have a diamond ramp going into input one. I'm currently in post mode and there's no bias applied. So as I turn this input up, you start to see the diamond ramp. As I turn the bias up in this post mode, it's adding to the total output so as you can see, as we get up, the screen just becomes totally white. As I pull it to the negatives, the screen will get completely dark. 
Now if I have this bias control all the way up, and I bring this down, nothing happens. And that's because this bias is being added after this. When I switch it to pre, you're going to see a very different behavior. Now this bias is being added to the input signal before the attenuverter. So as I go up, we'll get closer to that white screen that you saw before. Bring the bias down, we're back to black. If I go into negative, and I pull a negative bias all the way down in pre-mode, you'll see it's subtracting and then inverting. And if I switch to post, you're going to just get a black screen. So there's a lot of different applications for switching between these two different modes, but hopefully that helps explain the purpose of the pre-post switch. In this patch, we're going to look at how you can get some more dynamic keying effects using the passage. We'll take a look at the finished state of this patch before breaking it down and showing you how to get there. We have an external video source coming into the passage. This is then going to a keyer. The external video itself is being manipulated with passage, but the threshold input is also being modulated. In this case, the passage is taking a circular ramp from the visual cortex, summing it with an LFO to give us a circular wipe. So let's break this down. First, let's take a look at our external video source. This is some light show footage from the Joshua Light Show. It's a pretty cool source. It's very dynamic, has a lot of movement, and has a wide dynamic range from black to white. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this video input and put it into the through on channel one of the passage. This is then going to go to the source input on our doorway. And then I'll take the key output from doorway and plug that into layer one of my color codes. As I adjust the threshold, you start to see the basic keying effect. And while this is neat, it's a little bit one dimensional. So we're going to add some more movement using further channels on the passage. Put this threshold back down to zero. Okay, so now that we have our key basically working, I'm going to take a second channel of passage, and I'm going to put this into the layer two input. This is going to give us a little bit more of a color background so we have something to contrast the key with. Now the way the passage works is the inputs are normaled down. So I have the video input into channel one, the normal jack is distributing that to channel 2. The advantage of doing it through the passage instead of a multiple module is that I now have different controls for each of the image destinations. So I can adjust the bias, the offset, and what I'm eventually going to do is plug modulation sources in. So for this second one, we'll go to LFO1. And what this will do is give me some fading in and out of that background color. So I can have to go from black up to purple. The next thing we're going to do is add a circle ramp so we can get the wipe effect. So again on the passage, I'll go to the through input. This is going to break the normal connection because I don't want the video input adjusting the threshold. I want to use a ramp instead. So this is going to generate a basic circle ramp. We'll take that and go to the threshold voltage control in on the doorway. I'm going to pull the threshold all the way down so you start to see the circle. So now we want to add some modulation to this circular shape. So I'm going to take a second channel of pendulum, plug it into the input control. As I adjust the input attenuator, you'll see that LFO sweeping through the circle shape. This is going to give me a nice animation to my ramp. I'll speed this up a little bit. Right. This allows us to have a more multi-dimensional keying effect. I could switch to outline mode and get a very different result. And of course I can play with the gain controls get something softer or harder. Switch it back to solid. Go real soft. 
adjust the different biases, offsets, And there you have a basic dynamic keying patch. One of the nice things about this patch is it gives you multi-dimensional control of the threshold. Using Passage allows you to simultaneously use an LFO and a video rate source like a ramp to modulate the threshold of your keyer. So now we're going to take a look at how Passage can assist in extremely dynamic multi-dimensional pattern patches. I'm going to start with a diamond again. And I'm going to put this into the through input on one channel of the passage. Note that I'm starting from the bottom. This is a useful technique when you don't want to use the normal connections. This way, as I go through my patch, I ensure that I'm not accidentally getting things moving down to the further channels. So I'm going to put this into layer one, and there we start to see our diamond shape. I'm going to modulate this diamond shape with a slow moving video oscillator. Now that's pretty neat, but to make things a little bit more interesting, I'm going to use a doorway and key that and make it yellow. Now I'm going to take the H minus V ramp and plug that into a different channel of the passage. And actually this time I'm going to the top one because I'm going to use this for both channel one and two. So now I'm taking advantage of that normal connection. I'll take the one out and I'll go to the source on a doorway. I'll take this one out to layer two and I'll make that a nice cyan color. There we go. So now I've got the staircase doing that. And I'm going to take this opportunity to add a little modulation to that with an LFO from the pendulum. The third output, I'm going to put into layer three of the color cords. And that's going to give me a little background color. And we'll make that a little purpley. There we go. And again, modulate this with another LFO. Or alternately, I could use a different output from the prismatic ray. There we go. And now by adjusting these channels and switching different controls, we can get a variety of really complex patterns. Pendulum is a great way to add more dynamic modulations to your pattern and shape patches. Instead of just a basic scroll or a basic LFO, you can get patterns and shapes that modulate in more sophisticated and layered ways. Another great thing about Passage is that you can take the same basic shape and modulate it in a few different ways. So although different aspects of your patch are based on the same shape, they can have very different modulation and movement. And from here, playing with the settings in Passage can give you a ton of different effects. I hope this short video gives you some ideas of how to start patching your LZX Passage. Please leave any questions or requests for future patch videos in the comments below. Thanks for watching.